The world modifier is a method of being able to combine our geometry together in real time and then being able to control how that merging occurs. To access the world modifier, go to the modifiers tab in the properties panel. Select add modifier, then generate. Come down towards the bottom and choose weld from the menu. This will add the weld modifier to your object. The most similar tools to the weld modifier are the simple merging tools. To use these, just go into edit mode for your selected object and choose the geometry that you want to merge together. For example, let's say we wanted to merge these two vertices. Select them and press the M key to bring up the merge menu, and we can then choose how we want to merge the geometry. Here I'm just going to go at center. I can then select these two vertices, press M, at center. The weld modifier has a similar base approach where it will find vertices that are close together within a specific threshold and it will attempt to merge them together. With the world modifier, you can adjust where your object begins to merge its geometry in real time. Here I have Suzanne, and I'm just going to add a world modifier to Suzanne. And the key value that we're going to focus on here, first of all, is the distance. So there are three parameters by default, mode, distance, vertex group. I'm going to click and drag on the distance value and you will see in certain areas of the face that as we increase the distance, the geometry starts to merge together. So if it falls within the value that we set for the merge distance, then those two vertices that are close enough are going to be merged together. And if we click and drag, the more we increase this value, the more of the geometry gets merged. And as a result of this, you decrease the total amount of geometry on your model, but you also risk decreasing the amount of detail if you go too far with something like the world modifier. So for now, let's bring this back to the minimum value for the distance. Another way in which we can use the world modifier is to join different meshes together within the same model. Here I've got a torus object, and I'm just going to select a couple of loops down the center on the Y axis. Then I'm going to go to vertex, I think it is, and rip vertices. Next, I'm going to select all of one side, which I can actually do with the L key. Hit G, then X to move it across. So now we have two islands of the same mesh, and I want to weld these together. I'm going to add my weld modifier and then increase the distance. Eventually, I'll get to a high enough value that I can snap and weld the two islands together with a high enough distance. Now, if we go even further than that, we start to merge the rest of the geometry as well. But if you've got two islands that are very close together, you can use this distance value to join them up together. However, it is possible for you to merge islands together without affecting the rest of the geometry by using the vertex group parameter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into edit mode I'm going to select all of the vertices that I want to merge together, which are going to be these vertices here. I'm going to create a vertex group with them by going to the data properties in the properties panel. Click on the plus button here to add a new vertex group. We're going to name this as merge. And then we're going to click assign. Then return to the world modifier and choose the merge vertex group. Pop back into object mode and increase the distance. You'll find that the geometry welds together 
But if we continue to increase the distance value, it doesn't actually merge anything else. But once we reach a certain point, it does warp the geometry that we used for the merging. So again, we are able to successfully merge up to a point. We no longer have the issue of any of the other vertices merging. But in this example, we do have an issue where if the distance goes too high, it potentially almost overlaps and we get these issues when it comes to merging the geometry in the correct location. Just remember that when we are manipulating the distance value, yes, we are looking to merge the opposite vertices together, but if you take that value too high, then it starts to look for other vertices to merge with as well within the same vertex group. And eventually, that will change the result of the weld modifier at this location. Now, it could be that you actually want the opposite to occur, where you want to begin merging geometry that is just connected and not merge the geometry of the islands together. This can be done by changing the mode from all to connected. Now, if I click and drag to increase the distance value, you'll eventually see that we are beginning with our vertex group to merge the geometry that are a part of the same loop, but they're not actually connecting together. Now, if I was to turn off the merge option, you would see with this high distance value just how much of the geometry has been merged together. But again, the edge loops that we would want it initially to connect to each other, they're no longer connecting. And that's because we've changed the mode so that only the geometry that is a part of the same island is going to merge together. So here I can reduce or increase the distance but the two islands are never going to touch so long that we use the connected mode for the weld modifier. We then have a tick box labeled as only loose edges. Now this is going to only collapse any vertices and edges that do not have faces directly associated to them. This can be useful when in combination with cloth simulations can create things like items of clothing, for example. So I'm going to, first of all, tick this box. And if I click and drag, nothing is going to change because none of these edges that currently exist are categorized as loose edges. However, let's take a few of these face loops, hit the X key and choose to delete only the faces. Now we have vertices and edges that are not directly connected to or responsible for the existence of faces on our model. This time, if we move back into objects mode and begin to manipulate the distance parameter, you'll see that eventually these vertices start to collapse and merge together until none of those vertices remain. A common example of using the weld modifier is when you have accidentally duplicated your geometry in edit mode. Now this happens more often than you might think. So I'm going to go into edit mode for this model. And with the model selected, I'm going to press the G key. Now you will see that I'm able to move the geometry, but a secondary mesh is underneath. So the secondary mesh is overlapping the geometry of the original mesh. We can fix this issue by adding the weld modifier. All we need to do is add it and we can set the distance to a very low value because they should normally be overlapping. But if you have two vertices that are close together but not quite overlapping, you can increase the distance just a bit and that should weld them together. Then all we need to do is just apply the weld modifier, go back into edit mode, hit G to move, and now you can see that the duplicated geometry has disappeared because it was merged with the original mesh. Here is another example where we have an icosphere, and if I just zoom in on this point, 
you'll see that we created some additional geometry here that serves no real purpose to the mesh. Again, these vertices are not quite overlapping, but they're close enough that we can successfully use the merge option for the weld modifier. Just add the weld modifier and then increase the distance until the geometry merges. You may need to increase the distance to a point where all of the geometry will merge and collapse into the center location of where the vertices originally were. So if we zoom out, you can see we have successfully merged that geometry. And then when we're ready, we can just apply the world modifier. The world modifier can also be used to fix minor issues caused by other modifiers. For example, we have a cube here that we have scaled on the Z axis. I'm going to start by adding a bevel modifier. Let's increase the segments and increase the amount so that we end up pushing the bevel all the way to the center of the model on each side. Now, because of the settings that you will have by default, in particular under geometry, you'll have this clamp overlap option. The geometry isn't going to move inside of itself when manipulating the amount for the bevel modifier. If we turn this option off, you'll instantly see that we start to get that overlapping occur and the geometry just becomes unusable past a certain point. So it's always good to keep this on, but this does not entirely fix the issue of overlapping geometry. In fact, in a way, it causes overlapping geometry. Watch what happens if I go to apply the bevel modifier. The geometry has been applied with the bevel modifier. I'm going to move into edit mode and I'm going to select a vertex. You might already see, just by how it's highlighted, the potential problem. If I press the G key to move this geometry, you'll see there is a secondary vertex at the same location. This is because while clamp overlap prevented the vertices from moving past each other, it only limits the vertices in terms of how far they can go. And that limit is when they actually go on top of each other. So they are actually still overlapping with the bevel modifier. Now I'm going to use Control Z until we bring back the bevel modifier. And here's where we add the weld modifier after the fact. So these vertices are going to be overlapping right on top of each other. You shouldn't need to change the distance here, but you can increase it ever so slightly if the spaces between your other vertices is wide enough. And then we're going to apply the bevel again, then the weld, then move into edit mode, select a single vertex, press G to move, and the overlapping issue will have been fixed. That's it for this video. I hope you've learned enough on how to use the weld modifier to use it confidently in your projects. If you want to learn about more tools and modifiers in Blender, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell icon. For now, that's all from me, and I'll see you in the next video.